Syndrome from The Incredibles accomplishes something that very few villains manage to do. There are plenty of great antagonists who work because they pose a compelling threat to the heroes, and others who are entertaining because they don't. But Syndrome is a rare concoction in that he manages to embody the best of both worlds without either side invalidating the other. You always, always say be true to yourself, but you never say which part of yourself to be true to! And that's especially interesting in his case because it conveys a kind of tragedy with his character. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at his actual role in the story. We first see Syndrome, or Buddy, as a kid fascinated by superheroes, specifically his idol, Mr. Incredible. So much so that he tries to take up superhero work of his own, not realizing out of childhood naivety that he is obviously unqualified. He interferes with active crime scenes, escalates dangerous situations, seems completely oblivious to threats to other people and himself, and in general seems more interested in the spectacle of being a hero rather than, you know, just being one. And now you have officially carried it too far, buddy. And after facing the consequences for that, including the disapproval of his former idol, You're not affiliated with me! He chooses to blame everyone but himself, dedicating his adult life doubling down on his literal childhood fantasy of being a superhero and proving to the world that, no, actually, it was good that I interrupted the capture of a dangerous criminal, causing him to escape, almost derailing a train, and letting the man who saved it to suffer the resulting lawsuit. I only wanted to help! And because of that obsessive need to prove himself, he ends up becoming one of the most dangerous villains to ever come from Pixar. Honestly, with just how much legitimately terrifying and downright evil things he does throughout the second half of the movie, it can at times be easy to forget that he was introduced as a joke character who, sure, was reckless and destructive, but was ultimately too stupid and short-sighted to be taken seriously. And the climax is really a testament to his character flaws. His introduction to the scene involves him swooping in and quote unquote heroically rescuing a mother and baby from a truck thrown by the Omnidroid that he sent. And in keeping with his habit of prioritizing showing off over protecting lives, he introduces himself to the world by throwing the truck through the air, which I'll remind you is what the death robot he's there to stop literally just did, causing an explosion as it lands. I'm Syndrome! And bear in mind, when the Omnidroid threw that truck, people were running away because obviously they would. Run! Then everyone comes back to marvel at Syndrome after he arrives, and only after he's attracted them does he throw the truck, actively putting more people in danger than the Omnidroid in that moment, basically just because it looked cool. And the rest of the climax ends up being a really great showcase for how Syndrome manages to strike that perfect balance between silly and serious. On the one hand, his actions put the entire city in danger, unleashing a robot that even the military were powerless to stop, and was only defeated because one specific person had literal insider information on how to stop it. The only thing hard enough to penetrate it is... itself. But on the other hand, for the main villain of the movie, Syndrome has remarkably little direct involvement in the climax, which has been a bit of a theme throughout the movie. During the Bon Voyage encounter, he doesn't even acknowledge that a fight is happening, and from his recollection of the fight, seemingly just doesn't remember. Fly home, buddy. I work alone. Even during the action scenes in his own territory, his henchmen are usually the only ones to get their hands dirty. He does get one moment where he directly attacks Mr. Incredible, except that ends with him accidentally flinging him away, losing him in the process. Brilliant. An early sign during his reintroduction that even after all this time later, he still doesn't know what he's doing. Not to mention, he starts monologuing. He starts this prepared speech about how feeble Mr. Incredible is compared to him and how inevitable his defeat is and how respect will soon be his, yada, yada, yada. I feel like I've made that reference in another video. But then we see Syndrome in the climax, where all he has to do is put an end to a robot attack that he orchestrated and has practically full control over. He lasts less than a minute, flies into a wall, and then gets knocked out for the rest of the fight. Syndrome is so incompetent as a superhero that he can't even defeat a robot that he designed specifically to defeat. Then that leaves the Incredibles to step in and do the job that they're best at and that Syndrome couldn't accept he wasn't cut out for. No! It's also worth noting that Syndrome and the Incredibles both have very different attitudes during the fight. Syndrome, during his brief time in the fight, is playing to the crowd and making cliche quips that he no doubt heard from the media he grew up with. Someone needs to teach this hunk of metal a few manners! You know, basically the same way Joss Whedon writes Superman. Is this guy still bothering you? 
With the Incredibles themselves though, the family actually values the safety of the city, and their mood throughout the fight is surprisingly pretty serious for how over the top and comedic they were in a lot of the early scenes, showing their growth and ability to function as a unit. And with those attitudes in mind, you can also make the argument that Syndrome serves as like a dark parallel to Mr. Incredible. They both start their journeys loving super work, the only difference being that while Mr. Incredible enjoys it, he also takes the job seriously and does it for the right reasons. I'm just here to help. Cut to 15 years later though, and Mr. Incredible, missing the satisfaction he felt from hero work, has lost sight of the real reason for doing it, becoming so starved of it that he cheers at the idea of people being in danger for him to save. <laughs> And in the process, losing sight of the gifts that he actually had in his life. Essentially, Mr. Incredible is Buddy in that moment. I mean, I'm just saying, Mr. Incredible keeps a giant collage in his wall glorifying his hero work, and what does Buddy also have? The key difference between the two of them though is that Mr. Incredible learns to value the life he has and through that he's able to be a hero for the reasons that actually make someone a hero. And that's the realization that Syndrome was never mature enough to make, instead remaining the same child he always was after that one interaction he just refused to move on from. Go They're home, amazing. buddy. What? Now. But okay, to Syndrome's credit, he does have one more trick up his sleeve after the Omnidroids is defeated and we're treated to one last mini climax. Here, Syndrome shows up at the Incredibles' home to abduct Jack-Jack. He sticks around for a minute though to explain his motivation. You took away my future. I'm simply returning the favor. And it's here we realize that Syndrome has learned absolutely nothing, and much like he did 15 years ago, is blaming everyone but himself. I'd like you to indulge me for a minute here. Let's say, hypothetically, that Syndrome's actions throughout the movie were justified, that Mr. Incredible really was just a big old meanie and Syndrome was in the right for sending a giant robot to destroy a city. And let's throw in that the Daily Bugle is a reliable and trustworthy news source because why not? <laughs> Even if you want to play by Syndrome's logic here, he's still not correct. The Incredibles did not take away his future. He screwed up completely on his own, and the Incredibles just did what needed to be done. But in his mind, everything the Incredibles do is a direct attack against him personally. I'm, I'm being attacked! No, I'm not attacking <gasps> you! But after one last plan not going as well as he thinks it will, he vows to keep coming back before getting sucked into a jet turbine. This isn't the end of it! I will get you set eventually! I think a lot of people don't really consider the implications of that line, so let me paint a picture. Here we have a grown man who has been obsessing over Mr. Incredible since he was a child, has demonstrated zero ability to prove his worth to him, and his takeaway from all this is that he needs to spend more time invading his life. Can you imagine how sad and lonely Syndrome's life would have turned out if he hadn't died seconds later? Ah! Speaking of which, let's talk about how he died. It's not exactly a new observation to say that Syndrome's death is a callback to Edna Mode's rant from earlier in the movie. No kicks. But I think there's an extra level of meaning to it. Edna's argument in this scene is basically that she refuses to design suits with capes because it's a little bit of flashiness at the expense of a lot of practicality and safety. So in a way, it's kind of a fitting end for Syndrome. We first see him as a wide-eyed kid, enamored by the glamour of being a hero, but way too reckless and undisciplined. He went his life operating that way and it eventually caught up to him. His demise was a direct result of his own evil motivation. There are a lot of different reasons I can point to for why Syndrome is such an enjoyably hateable villain. His ego, his victim complex, his complete lack of regard for the world outside his own mind. But despite all of that, I think there is also kind of a tragic aspect to his character in a weird way. It's been well established that as a superhero, Buddy just didn't have what it took. But he wasn't completely untalented. We see throughout the movie that he was a genius inventor, starting out as a child prodigy creating his own pair of rocket boots. That's insanely impressive for someone his age, and the movie itself acknowledges it in this scene. Well, not every superhero has powers, you know. You can be super without them. I invented these. I work alone. Keep in mind what Mr. Incredible said there. He didn't disagree with Buddy because Buddy is objectively correct. He just dismisses it because in an act of crime scene, that's not really the point. But even if Syndrome wasn't great at heroics in a traditional sense, he did still have potential. As an adult, his talent for inventing only got stronger. 
Imagine how much he could advance technology if he actually shared what he's created with the rest of the world instead of isolating all of it on a remote island. He could have become a hero by helping society in enormous ways. Except helping society was never what he cared about. All he cared about was being a hero. Hell, on top of the implications that he sold his inventions to dangerous parties. Turns out there are a lot of people, whole countries, who want respect. How do you think I got rich? I invented weapons. He openly admits that the thought of helping society is something that's crossed his mind. And when I'm old and I've had my fun, I'll sell my inventions so that everyone can be superheroes. Everyone can be super. And there you have it. He is willing to share his genuine gifts with the rest of the world, but only in his twilight years after he's done hoarding them for his own personal gain. I only wanted to help! Sure you did. Hey guys, just a little brief addition that I'm adding into the video at the very last minute, so apologies for the uh, shitty camera quality and also shitty microphone setup. But um, if you did enjoy this video, first of all, thank you for watching. I'm very appreciative of that. And also, uh, uh, to those of you who watched my original my original Incredibles video, uh, thank you for that. For those of you who don't know, I made a video about The Incredibles nine months ago, and it did really, really well by my standards. It got about 3,000 views, uh, which was really good. And then suddenly out of nowhere, just over like the past couple weeks, it suddenly shot up out of nowhere to like almost 100,000 it has at this point, which is really fucking good. So I'm very appreciative of that. Um, um, uh, appreciation, appreciation is also to uh, the people who left comments on the video, uh, uh, giving me your own your own insight into the movie, which I had never even considered. And, and uh, I feel like I learned something about the movie just as I hopefully taught you a little something about it. So that's great. Um, um, also, uh, to every single one of you in the comments who was telling me, you got to watch The Princess Bride, you got to watch The Princess Bride. Uh, I went out, uh, I went out, bought uh, The Princess Bride, and then watched it purely for the sake of this uh, little addition at the end of this video here. And you know what? You're right. It is very good. So thank you for that. Um, and one final thing I'd like to say is that if you uh, did enjoy this video and you'd like this to be a bit of a more permanent give and take relationship, uh, you should consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Uh, for all, for only um, a dollar fifty a month, you'll get access to all my videos before they get released on YouTube. Um, you'll also get alternate thumbnails that I made during the video making process, which you'll get to see nowhere else. And uh, you'll also get a shout out at the end of every video. So if you'd like to hear your name coming out, your name or a nickname uh, coming out of my lovely mouth, uh, that was that was a very bad way of putting that, but still, um, um, uh, you know where to go. Link is in the description.